Super Talk Mississippi Media Production. You're listening to Thunder and Lightning on Super Talk Mississippi. Covering Mississippi State sports like nobody else. With Sports Talk Mississippi's Brian Haydad and Robbie Falk of On3 Sports. Now get ready for Thunder and Lightning. This is Thunder and Lightning here on Super Talk Mississippi. Brian Haydad and Robbie Falk here with you on a Friday morning. Thanks for joining us here at supertalk.fm or wherever it is that you get podcasts from. We appreciate all you guys out there, our great listeners, especially our servicemen and women out there taking care of us. want to thank our sponsors over at Strange Brew Coffee House and Churn and Spoon Ice Cream. Start your day the right way with a trip to the drive-thru over at Strange Brew Coffee House here in Starkville or at Brupolo over in Tupelo. It would be a little weird, Robbie, if Brupolo was in LaFleur, which is not in LaFleur County. That would be a little weird. Wherever you are in our great state, you can enjoy Strange Brew Coffee each and every morning. It's just a click away at strangebrewcoffeehouse.com. College Corner, collegecornerstore.com is the place to find the maroon and white merchandise that you are looking for, and you certainly are looking for it. So much great stuff coming out nowadays with all the, the the new logos. You need to get involved. Get yourself some new gear at College Corner. Two locations to serve you in the Jackson area. Ridgeland by Fleet Feet, Flow by the Half Shell, or you can shop online, collegecornerstore.com. PIP Printing and Signs, reliable service for every business need. And guys, you are if you're a business owner, I don't have to tell you how important printing is. Printing is the lifeblood of your business. It's what gets your message From you to me as a customer. And so, you have to deal with the best when it comes to printing. You don't want to deal with somebody who's going to go halfway. You want to go somebody who's going to do everything it takes to get your business done, get your business's message out there. That's what PIP Printing and Science is all about. Go to their website, pipridgeland.com, to get a better look at everything that's offered by PIP Printing and Science. It is an incredible array of marketing, of signage, of graphics, of everything that your business needs to get people talking about your business. Then you're going to call Cam Baker at 601-499-5216 and tell him, hey, you heard about this on Thunder and Lightning? Give him a call today. When you need printing, call Pip Pip today. Restaurant Tyler, Starville's flagship restaurant for lunch, dinner, Sunday brunch, the best meal in town is at Restaurant Tyler. I'm going to be at Restaurant Tyler. I guess I should say I'm going to Restaurant Tyler uh, tonight. As you're listening, that would have been last night. So you may have seen me there. A uh, friend of mine in from out of town, guy I went to high school and uh, college with, and I, he was like, where should we go eat? I was like, I, I know exactly the place. And so we'll be at Restaurant Tyler to enjoy a fantastic meal. This weekend, if you're going to be in Starkville, if you want to enjoy a fantastic meal, I know the place. It's Restaurant Tyler. Priority One Bank, 16 locations to serve you throughout central Mississippi. Let PriorityOneBank.com be your guide. Let them show you not only where they are located, but show you how they're going to help you manage your money, help you invest and help you build your future. Now more than ever, it's more important to be able to talk to your banker, to be able to get a person on the phone when you have a question about your money. That's what you're going to get with Priority One Bank. Let Priority One Bank make you their priority. So a very unusual Friday show here, Robbie. Normally we would jump right into the uh, the three Ps. It's Friday, we would, we would talk that. Three Ps were sponsored by Sanders Reynolds. We can't do that today. There's a ton of news that has happened today. We'll get to the recruiting news in just a, a moment or two. But we got to start with a historic day for Mississippi State in terms of the NIL world. An $8 million gift given anonymously to Mississippi State to set up a, a plan for the future of NIL at Mississippi State. Uh, you got word. Uh, you, you got tipped off a little bit on that. I think you had you had some inside information on that, uh, which you were kind enough to pass along to your friend Brian. Yes. Uh, this was this to say it came out of nowhere is not an accurate statement. Obviously, Mississippi, Mississippi State had been working on this for quite a while, but it seems like it came together pretty quickly, and uh, it is a it is a gift that Charlie Winfield. Uh, he you can't really tell a mood from a tweet sometimes, but I think giddy might be the right word. Yeah, it, for for good reason too. Uh, this is huge for Mississippi State's efforts moving forward, and it's it's just it's just kind of the start, I think, of some like a rejuvenation mm-hmm. with this fan base. Uh, from what I understand, the preliminary talks of this began after the game on Saturday. Uh-huh. I 
I don't think it's a uh, exaggeration to say that that game had a lot to do with it. This was this. There's nothing wrong with something being reactionary. Yeah. This was reactionary. Yeah, anybody using this as a negative is just missing the point. Sometimes it does take, you know, getting knocked out uh, to get you back up here. And that's I think that's kind of the message, too, that, that the Bulldog Initiative is using because they've started their own campaign pushing for more money. I think it's called the Answer the Bell uh, campaign or, or something like that. I haven't been able to look at that just yet, but... Um, they're basically starting a campaign. Mississippi State's been knocked down, mm-hmm. and they've just about been knocked out. But this is their opportunity here for the fan base, for everybody to be pulling in the right direction. And I think there was initially a number for this, and I think it was even the the people that were so gracious to to donate this money, I think they came back and said, no, we want to get more. Yeah. And this isn't Dak Prescott, by the way. Folks, I, I want people. I want to make that clear. People just think yeah. Dak Prescott just wrote a check. That does not happen. I, what I asked from from my source, I was like, "Do you know who this is?" And they were like, "Yes." And I was like, "Is it somebody people would know?" And he was like, uh, "Maybe." And I was like, "So it's not Dak or Fletcher Cox?" Oh no, no, no! It's nothing like that. I think people would just believe that the only people that involve with Mississippi State to have money are the are NFL guys. NFL guys. Yeah, I agree. It's not true. Yeah. There, there's a lot of wealthy people in this fan base, and there's a lot of wealthy people that are tired of Mississippi State being in the situation. And whether that has to do with the fact that they lost Toledo or whether the fact that it has to do with that Ole Miss is having success, it doesn't matter. What matters is people want Mississippi State to be better than what they are. And among those people are some of the ones that have taken the most heat in the last two weeks. Zach Selman and his staff, Jeff Lebby and his staff, and uh, totally get it. Those are the people sitting in the chairs right now. And Jeff Lebby was the one that put the team on the field last week and is going to put the team on the field the rest of the season. But I think what's important to note, and we're going to get into it a little bit when we talk here in a bit about the other good news that came on uh, Mon- on uh, Thursday and Wednesday night as well. Yeah. But people are working their – you know what off. I don't want to cuss on air because my mom might be listening. But Don't do that. They're working their tail off. Heine. In that, Heine. There you go. In the Bryan building, the people that have been criticized, that they don't know what they're doing, they don't care, they don't want to be here, I cannot say enough how wrong that is. Mm-hmm. And it's not you or I being a mouthpiece for the university or – no, Nobody is telling us what to when say. You're, when you're telling the truth. Yeah, this is the truth. There is a lot of stuff that's been going on behind the scenes, and this donation today doesn't happen without those people either. And I believe that Mississippi State has gotten better as a athletic department and as a program in the last 24 hours. And whether or not that translates into wins, I don't know. But I think this is this loss last week has pissed off people enough. I thought you weren't going to cuss. That they, I don't really consider that a cuss word. <laughs> You do for whatever reason you get upset about that. I don't. Every time I say it, you're you're like, hey, because it's close enough that I can make the joke. Okay, well, <coughs> state fans are going in the opposite direction <coughs> of where I thought this could head, and I was I'm glad that it's not. It's been a pleasant it, surprise to see the positive reaction. It's one of the things that we talked about after the game. Everybody's initial reaction after that game was, I don't want to watch this anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have anything to do with this program right now. And in reality, what this university needs now more than ever is total fan support. Solidarity. Everybody pulling in the right direction. This thing's not going to get turned around this year. I can promise you that. Mississippi State, I, I feel certain, will not go to a bowl game. And I'm not being negative about that. That's just the reality of the situation. But what you can do as a fan base is build off of what this family, people, person has done on Thursday afternoon. You can build on this, and you can turn Mississippi State around a lot faster than they would be normally. Yeah. I think one question a lot of fans have is, you know, why not just to the, the Bulldog Initiative? This is very much a move for the future. I yeah, think, I feel like we kind of buried the lead. Uh, I buried the lead there. Yeah, that this is not this is going to the university and not the Bulldog Initiative. I think this is preemptive. This is sort of reading the room that the time is coming for NIL to move under the university's auspices. 
my, my thought process was they could have donated it to the Bulldog Initiative, and then if something could change, the Bulldog Initiative could just donate it right back to the university. But this is about being prepared for the future. Revenue sharing is coming. Uh, it's going to be a new day. The way NIL is going is run is going to be different this time next year. This is a, a thing to get in front of that. And when Charlie Winfield is on Twitter saying, this is a big day, this is helpful, you can take his word for it, I think, at this point, that this is something that benefits the NIL perspective for Mississippi State. I think what uh, I want to explain something to people because people were very confused when they saw this because yeah. nobody knew what the – um, the stu- the state, excellence, state fund. excellence fund was because this yeah. has basically just been launched. This is initially like Mississippi State's like uh, entrance into revenue sharing. Yeah, and this is basically partnered with the Bulldog Club that they started the Crystal Society, which is the top donors at Mississippi State, it's just a way to recognize some of those people and reward them as well. It's something that, you know, a lot, a lot of this is something that Mississippi State should have been doing years ago. And Zach Selman and, and his staff, they've had to play catch up pretty quickly here on what they're doing. And one thing I'll say is Mississippi State is, is preparing itself in a very good way for revenue sharing. And that it started with the hires that they made. I think Terry Prentice was a rock star hire for them. Um, Josh McCallan is, is that his name? Josh Josh McCallan. Oh, I know you're right. Yes, that's uh, correct. Yes, okay. another guy with a tremendous fundraising background. These are people that have worked with either or both NIL and fundraising, and then they've added more pieces from SEC schools that have come in here that know what to do when it comes to NIL and and kind of preparing for this. So what Mississippi State is doing, and this is kind of the beginning of that whole revenue sharing um, form that they're running right now mm-hmm. is that they've placed that into the this, the fund and I don't believe that that is something that's you know is accessible right now as far as the university cannot give Nil dollars to students right now correct. But the expectation is in the coming months that's and over the next year, that's going to change. Yeah, and I think, I think that's so, a very, very reasonable assumption. And what people don't understand, too, I think, is like where they say, well, this doesn't help us right now. It absolutely does help you right now. Because what you tell student athletes is we have an $8 million donation from Ready one person, and that's being adding, added on to. You will make this money during your time at Mississippi State. Yeah. We have the funds and when this bill is passed or whatever, these funds are available to you. You know what else it helps? It there's all there's a lot of, of nerves about Title IX sports and Olympic yeah. sports. This is a way of saying we don't have to cut sports at Mississippi State to fund our athletes. We can do it. We have the money. Right. And and also this this is going towards it's, it's going to be related to the Bulldog Club. So there's going to be scholarships yeah. that are paid through this, which Bulldog Club has done that. And forever. there's going to be. Benefits to those who don't donate. Yes, when that so, time comes. No, this isn't a direct deposit into the Bulldog Initiative, but it is a. It's kind of the start of the revenue sharing model, and if you're concerned about that, you know we don't have eight million dollars. What are we going to do? But well, that's what the Bulldog Initiative's for. Mm-hmm. If you need funds right off the bat, if you need to retain athletes or whatever, the Bulldog Initiative it has its own. Forms, you know, yeah. it's 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 doing its own thing. So, I, Mississippi State is going to be in really good shape, and we have the Bulldog Initiative now pushing for more money. It's it's a good spot to be in. No question about that. And it's kind of funny that on this this day, I get to play this song. Been a little while since we've uh, we've heard those dulcet tones. Right you know, I, the other night at, at Creed, my friend was there with me. He didn't realize. Did he just you, hear the news today? Yeah, he he didn't realize you were there too. Yeah, and he and his dad are obsessed with the Cruton song. <laughs> So he wanted to film me and him doing it uh-huh. to send his dad. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know the guy that actually did it was here. Yeah, he was. Brian was here. One like section next, over. 
He was so mad. We got to tell. We did not tell everybody, by the way, about how what you did to me. <laughs> so at the at, I, at behind I, you, I, yeah, I knew Robbie was in 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 the arena, in the amphitheater. And I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm in I'm in my seat. I'm on the end of the row. If you want to come over, so you don't have to bother anybody. Yeah. So I'm just sitting there looking at the stage. I'm talking to Jennifer, and all of a sudden, I feel somebody blowing on my ear, and I'm just like. <laughs> Is somebody back there vaping? What is going on? And I turn around, and this, you know what, has this, you know what, eating grin on his face. And I'm just like, <laughs> you son of a, you know what. And there's a lot of profanity. I apologize for that. But <laughs> he's just laughing. And Jennifer looks I was like, he blew on my ear. She was, she, she was laughing too. She wasn't even jealous. She was hoping you would leave. With yeah, her. she was like, well, you know, if that turns you on, Brian, get the hell get out, out of here. Get out of here. So, all right. Recruiting can turn you on too. Good, good uh, 24 hours. And before we talk about the guys who have committed, you, there could be a couple m- 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 more happening, right? Is that is that the rumor that there might be maybe uh, maybe the, one more? The, these are the two that I've that you've heard. That I've heard. Okay. Like the, the, I was alluding to it a little bit the other day you were about an alluder. about the uh, yeah. the momentum starting to build a little bit after this. Yeah, but th- these were the two that I heard. I I had no clue when it was going to happen. Yeah. But I felt really good about both of them committing, and I'm, I'm glad. This is perfect timing, obviously. All right, so let's talk about uh, Tony Mitchell. Safety, EMCC, big-time recruit out of high school, went to Alabama, ran into some of that Georgia legal trouble. Well, he's, a, he's, a, he's got a fast car. We'll just, we'll just put it at that. Uh, has to leave Alabama. Tickets to anywhere? Well, his tickets went to Scuba, evidently. Yeah. Um, apparently Saban doesn't put up with that speed and BS. Yeah, Kirby Smart lets you go as fast as you want. Was that what it was? I, I, I think. I've see. never really researched it, but let me see if I can find out. Uh, oh yeah, possession of a controlled substance as well. So, oh yeah, he had twenty grams of weed. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about weed, so I don't know if that's a lot or not. But he was, he was also going. It's illegal. I know it's illegal. He. Uh, <laughs> He was going 141 miles an hour. Yeah, maybe don't do that, especially if yeah. you have um, that in your car. Yeah, but he did 100 hours of community service, paid a fine, and, and he's good to go. So anyway, five-star prospect out of out of high school. Obviously, the talent is there. Looks like he's got his head on straight, so second chance, here he comes. EMCC's got a couple of guys stayed as after on that defensive side of the ball. And you and I both know, after watching this, these first couple games, they need defensive guys who can come in right away. And State's had some good luck with these these second-chance guys, when I, for guys who were at power programs and then you know end up having to go to JUCO and then they come to Mississippi State. Obviously, uh, Montez Sweat would be at the top of that list. Jonathan Abram would be at the top of the list. Uh, but, you know, Chauncey Rivers had a good career here at, at Mississippi State. Um, Brian Cole. Brian Cole, baby. Uh, so th- th- you know, th- there's been some 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 work there in the, in the past. If he can live up to that kind of billing, I mean, he could be a, an immediate difference maker for state next season. Oh yeah, this is a guy that was in line was probably going to be a starter or major contributor for Alabama. Yeah. So this this isn't one of those, you know, he was processed, uh, you know, Tyrell Shavers type. Yeah. Guy. Um, I know Shavers had a decent career after Mississippi State, but th- it wasn't a guy that left because of playing time. He he was a player that they they felt like was going to have a really good career there, and it just it didn't work out for him. So this is huge for Mississippi State to try to shore up some of their issues uh, defensively, and they need a lot more of this because they've got to have defensive linemen, uh, linebackers, more defensive backs. This is a great start to get Tony Mitchell. He has uh, three tackles for loss, forced fumble already in the first couple of games. Mm-hmm. He's, he's already been really productive. And I watched some of his film the other day just because I was interested to see kind of how he's translating that level. Sometimes you see guys that are just absolutely dominating, and sometimes guys are just going through the motions and they don't really show out. Yeah, And he has – some legitimate like instincts. Yeah, the dude just he plays. Well, they don't give with those five star things away, you know. Yeah, I mean the 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 reactionary mindset that he has on the mm-hmm. defensive side really That's impressive. Great instincts, so. and and talented too. So yeah. I I think that this is huge for Mississippi State. This guy's a starter for them next year. I mean, this is yeah. a plug and play. Okay. Uh, the the traditional, you know, 
JUCO guy that, that used, used to be to able to come in and get him yeah. away. Real quick, I want to show you a picture, and I want to get your reaction to it. You ready? Okay. Oh, yeah, brother. Brandon Walker and Hulk Hogan at the Barstool Studios. I sent him a text. I was like, it is insane that you are taller than him. It really is because he, he is he's a, a big good guy. three inches taller than Hulk Hogan. That's crazy. But he, is Hulk probably 6'3"? Yeah, but they build him at like 6'7". Yeah. So, and also through the years, enough. I think he's lost some height because of his back. Um, is he going on like a tour or something? I, th- I think so. Yeah, like he's, he's doing he's, a bunch of radio interviews. interviews. But I mean, he's a guy, right now. If if you're a guy like Hulk Hogan, if you, somebody say, if somebody's like, "Hey, can I interview Hulk Hogan?" and you say yes, you'll do it. You yeah. Know? So, All but, right. uh, Brandon, please bring back the podcast. Form. Apparently, we're, 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 it is out there. We just have to. We're, we're not looking in the right places. Is it a different? I gotta look. Okay. I don't know. I, somebody told me that. Anyway, back to Mississippi State. The other commitment, talk about a long time coming. We've been talking about Tyler Lockhart for months now. And, you know, his brother commits to Mississippi State and signs last year. Everybody thinks it's a done deal. He'll be a Bulldog. He commits to Auburn. And, you you know, you're wondering, okay, well, what's going to happen here? He decommits. Then there was a, a situation a, a few weeks back where it looked like he was going to go back with Auburn and – you you were pretty adamant that you know look he's going to end up at state it, it's just this process here it appears now the process is over Tyler Lockhart is committed to Mississippi State yeah I'm I'm glad that this you know is hopefully resolved and yeah. he's made that decision I mean you've been wanting him to get in the boat this yeah. is a big fish to have in the boat this is a guy that I mean I don't feel like I'm exaggerating I think he can be a Willie Gay type player for wow. you defensively that's a big one um. And a dynamic player at linebacker, a guy that a lot of teams in the SEC wanted badly. And for once, you just wanted a guy with those strong ties to Mississippi State to jump in and be all in with Mississippi State. Right. And, I mean, even Mario Nash, you get him committed, he's taking visits to other places. You need a guy that's invested in Mississippi State that is going to be And you have that with Taylor. Yeah, Kamaro Taylor does that, too. So, um you didn't ask. I did. Omar, I just, gum it. I know. I had I had our, our, I had Omar Connor on you, that, that interview is further down the podcast. I meant to ask him about Camario Taylor because that's his nephew. Yeah. And I forgot to do it. Oh well. I even reminded. you. Ah, you did. You oh, did. Well. But but yeah, Camario's like that. But he's not even you know as high profile as as Lockhart. Right. And probably because he's not taking visits, he's just shut things down. He's very quiet about you know his recruitment. Lockhart, if you get him in, you get him invested, you get him recruiting for you, that's a huge win for State. And they had to have these two. I mean, they had to have momentum in such a bad way. I mean, I I still look at this season ahead, and I I see that it's going to be gloomy, and it's going to be you know a lot of despair from this fan base and stuff. But any kind of win you can get right now, Including the, the the biggest story of the day uh, mm-hmm. that that we'll talk about, any kind of win you can get right now is humongous. And state getting this kind of commitment on board that was being pushed incredibly hard by Auburn, and we know what they're doing right now in recruiting, being pushed incredibly hard by you know some other teams. Ole Miss was after him. Um, Alabama recruited him. LSU. This is a huge get for state. We felt like it was going to happen. But State needed a win in a major way, and I think this was bigger than Tony Mitchell from a perception standpoint. Tony Mitchell, I think, he probably helps you more next year, uh-huh. and he could be the better player. I, I, yeah. We'll see what, what time but you tells couldn't us. lose a guy whose brother and best friend play here. Yeah. And I think they would have gotten the, him anyway. But they needed him earlier. They, they needed him now. Yeah. This is and, around – did Willie Gay commit on signing day? Yes. Okay, he waited all the way. Kobe okay. Jones committed on signing day. Yeah. Like all these guys that are that you would consider strong leans to Mississippi State yeah. that were could have helped pretty high profile. Yeah, they did not commit Pickering, until late. Pickering was committed, but then he got out. Like he, there was some. He, he, he was still until, looking at teams. Yeah, it was just yeah. You so, need and and I I think what the staff wants to do now is to get these guys locked in. We saw Mario Nash. He tweeted out uh, something. Yeah, uh, kind of similar. Kamara Taylor tweeted out. The other day, he was locked in. You need these guys to, to be kind of a unified front uh-huh. because this season is going to be such a struggle. Yeah, you need these guys to stick together and keep that you know positive mindset 
throughout this. And if they survive this, Mm -hmm. if they can survive this year, no matter the win total, I like where this thing's moving for Mississippi State. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's move into the three Ps. No, I don't know that we've ever had a Friday show in football season where we didn't start with the three Ps, but it is what it is. Just Just too much. Just a lot of news today. Uh, And that's brought to you by our friends over at the Mississippi Beef Council who want to remind you that beef, it is what's for dinner. Wherever you are in our great state, you are near a great steak. Well, I need to, okay. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I just, I just, I just came up. I, 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 sometimes I give myself a little gold. If wherever you are in our great state, you're not that far away from a great steak. And that is 100% true. I'm just saying, when the Mississippi Beef Council starts putting that on t shirts, I would like to say small, either a small percentage or. Or a whole beef tenderloin delivered to my house every month. Or we're just we, we want everything named after us. So just change the name from beef to thunder and lightning. Yes, I'll thunder and lightning. It's what's for dinner. I don't think yeah. that, that that doesn't well, really roll off the tongue. Uh, not wants my to best eat. idea, but no. at least it gets our name out there. We just, I would we, like a you know a, an eight a, ounce thunder and lightning. Now, now we, the, no, no, the thunder and lightning steak has to be like a sixty four ounce porterhouse. It's yeah. got to be a challenge steak. So, or do you want like a tomahawk? Yeah, uh, that's, what I want. that's what I'm talking about. 64, 64 ouncer. Yeah. I, want, I want the big boy. Yeah, that's what I want. That's beef, good. it's what's for dinner. Now, now I want to go have some beef. I had beef last night. I made uh, made some uh, some stir fry noodles with some uh, some beef, and it was Ooh. fantastic. Really, Sounds really, great. It was good. It was good. I was, I was I did Asian twice yesterday. I got I had pho for lunch and uh, stir fry noodles for dinner. I don't know if I even. What did I even have for dinner last night? I don't remember. Uh, uh. Wasn't beef, obviously, because it wasn't memorable. No. Well, there you go. Two Brothers Smoked Meats in the heart of the Cotton District is the place for smoked Southern soul oh, food. Oh, Firehouse Subs. Eh. The, you know, I, we used to talk them up. I wish we could. Uh, I still love Firehouse Subs. I, I still talk I them up. I eat there often, yeah. Uh, I know William's listening. He I'm is still, listening. I, well, I, man, I eat a Firehouse all the time. I, it's they, still my favorite sandwich, William. It's great. We understand how business works. Yeah, we get it. It hasn't stopped my love for fire. No, no. Here's the thing. Like, there's very few startable businesses I would go out of my way to slam. And I won't do it in public. I, do, I do you it in consider private. that a small business, like a local? Okay. All right. Let me get to the ad break. Okay, I come we'll, we'll to come to the ad break. Two Brothers Smoked Meats, Heart of the Cotton District. Great place to eat. Fantastic food. People are awesome. And the older brother, Startville's best new restaurant, we're the home of the fancy sandwich. Whichever one you want to choose, they're right. Look, you can walk. You can be walking the cotton district and go, do I want fancy sandwich or do I want smoked southern soul food? And you have that choice, and they're literally a 10-yard out away from each other. So you can make that decision on the fly. When you want to have a great meal, head to the cotton district and make your choice between two brothers smoked meats and, of course, the older brother. Great products, great service. Every business likes to promise it to you. They deliver it to you at Advantage Business Systems. They've been doing it now 40, not 50, 50, 50, 50. When you need technology for your business, give them a call. And then if you need service on something they've sold you, it's a phone call away. And it's not a 1-800 number. It's not being on hold for 45 minutes. It's not, okay, our technician can be there in a week to 10 days. A lot of times it's going to be the same day because they're in Mississippi just like you. The number is 601-362-9192. Or you can visit them online, absms.com. Find out how Advantage Business Systems will help your business do business. Before you go to the game this weekend, you need to go to Maroon & Co. They have got a selection of Mississippi State gear that you cannot get anywhere else. It's the best place in Starkville to shop for Mississippi State gear. Everything you're looking for, clothes, stuff for your car, your tailgate, your house, whatever it is, Maroon & White, it's at Maroon & Co. And you can save a little money. The promo code is THUNDER15, 15% off, regular priced items. Some exclusions do apply. Before you go to Davis Wade Stadium, go to Maroon & Co. All right, so this is something, as a former restaurant manager, yep. when people talk about, oh, I don't like to eat at the chains. You're like right, you're, you are getting sick. I am. Uh, I don't like to eat at the chains. You know, I like to, to eat local. Yes, the pers- the ultimate owner of that restaurant isn't a local most times, right? But the franchisees are local. The manager of that restaurant is a, is a person who lives in your town. All of the employees of that restaurant live in your town. So it doesn't matter what restaurant you eat. If you eat at Starkville, if you eat at Restaurant Tyler, if you eat at Two Brothers, or if you eat at McDonald's, you benefit Starkville. You benefit your community. So when people say about eating local, yeah, I agree. I want to support small business owners. I do. 
But at the same time, you are supporting your community when you go eat literally anywhere in this town. So that's something I, I firmly believe. As a guy who used to work for a chain restaurant, you know, I, I you know I, I just tell you that I like seeing people come into my restaurant. So is so. there? So would you say there's a difference between the, like a small business, like a like a locally owned and in, in yeah. since like. You know, like Strange Brew right. versus McDonald's. Yes, there is a difference. Like, w- would you say that it's like small biz- business versus just a local? A, versus a, I mean, everything is local, right? Yeah. If it's in Starkville, it's a Starkville business. Right, right. But there is a difference between something that's owned locally. It, the, the, you like, should throw the word in there, locally owned right. business. Like, for me, and I think you're the exact same way, uh-huh. I think that we are locally owned first. Right. We we both would like that. to go to the local businesses first. But I don't pretend that the dollars I spend at, at Pizza Hut or Burger King aren't also going to benefit the Starkville economy. Right. So Yeah, no, like but I, I just like I like to support the first and I foremost do too. the I do the, too. Like two brothers, Tyler, like places yeah. like that that aren't like What chains. I don't like is people who say stuff like I don't, I don't eat at chains. I don't eat at chains because I like to support local the guy who manages the restaurants in this town lives in Starkville, all right? Right. I, I, I'm speaking from experience on this one. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's something. Yeah, eventually somewhere up the chain, some money is going away from Starkville. But, like, the franchisee who runs uh, Papa John's here in this town owns Oxford and, and Tupelo and Columbus, and they own a few others in, in, across the state. Their money stays in the state. And that the money they earn in those cities stays in the cities, right? The managers make their salary, the delivery drivers and the, and the inside people make their salary, and that money gets spent at other places. It's it, it's 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 yeah. Locally owned business and local businesses are are two are just different things to me. So. Yeah. There's uh there's the business minute brought to you by Thunder and Lightning. If you would like to sponsor the business minute, please reach out to me. All right. Three piece time, and that's brought to you by the good folks. Speaking of sponsorships, by our friends at Sanders Rentals. I, I, I've got a, a video. I got. I'm going to tweet out today of this incredible property, guys. If you're staying at a hotel when you come for game days, you're doing it wrong. All right, you're spending way too much money for not enough comfort. Places like Sanders Rentals, they have game day rentals, and they've got a great uh, rental for you right now for the weekends of Arkansas and Missouri. If you want to come to Starville, they've got a, a two bedroom cottage couple of TVs in there, full kitchen, everything right there. Not too far from campus, just like a five-minute drive. It's worth driving five minutes from campus to save yourself a ton of money and have a much better experience than being you know, in a, in a small hotel room. You're cramped. You don't have all the amenities. Give Sanders Rentals a call, and you're going to find out. Once, once you rent with them one time, you'll never go back to a hotel. You'll always be looking for rental properties. I agree. For I, I do and that we, all the time yeah. now. If, call, I, if I'm with my wife, and I'll just go to a hotel for by myself. Right. Call our buddy Will Sanders, and he'll take care of it. Tell him you heard about it on Thunder and Lightning, 662-769-1412. If you need to give him any tips on how to cook a tri-tip, he will take those as well. And he got those from Brian. Well, it, originally I told him, but you know, sometimes he forgets. Brian doesn't like to brag about that. Though. I don't. I don't. I don't like to. They've got tri-tip on sale at uh, Kroger Ooh. right now. I might. May have to go there this weekend and get me a tri tip. How was that that tri tip from our friend Sam? Oh, delicious! The chuck roast was amazing. Yeah. It, as was the ground beef. I still have the. It dinosaur just tastes steaks so much too. different. I may cook those dinosaur steaks next weekend when we cook out. Okay. Yeah, you know, I don't think you'll mind, will you? Not at all. So no, but those like th- that meat just tastes so fresh so off much, the hoof. It tastes so much better. So, beef, it's what's for dinner. Thanks to our friends. All right. Three piece time. Again, we, beef got the double whammy today. Hey, well they don't. They, you know what? They don't. They don't owe me any extra. Um, I agree with. I, I agree with myself, Robbie. I said this yesterday, and the more I've thought about it, the more I agree. The more I, I, I think I'm right. Some these two teams have struggled running the football this year. They, they've also struggled stopping the run. Mm-hmm. Whoever does that tomorrow wins this football game. It, it, it's going to be as close to 1985 as you can possibly get. It's going to be three yards in a cloud of dust. It's going to be whoever controls the line of scrimmage in this game wins it. I don't have any doubt about it in my mind. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that. I mean, I think that's that's usually the case, but it it's just seems to be especially the case with Mississippi State and Florida, both two teams that just – haven't been able to get it done up front. And for the Bulldogs, I mean, you got to show some signs of life up there, man. Like, 
this is going to get really, really bad this year in mind anyway, but if you cannot block or get penetration in the backfield, this is going to get ugly against everybody, improving, including UMass. So th- this, is a, this is a huge game for them in terms of trying to turn it around up front and, and just be better. They're going to have to find a semblance of a running game in this, in this ball game. I don't think uh, the athletes are too good at Florida. Even with the issues that they have, the athletes are too good to just be one-dimensional. Yeah. That being said, and, I, and it maybe, maybe flies in the face of it, if you're Jeff Levy, would you start this game off heavy passing and trying to loosen things up as much as you can? I don't feel like teams are stacking the box against Mississippi State. They're just winning with their front four. Yeah. But do you at least make them think, okay, they, they're going to come out throwing the football? Yeah, I could definitely see that. I don't, You know, I want to say they tried to run it early in the game against Toledo, mm-hmm. and that kind of bogged them down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Maybe try to re- re- alleviate some pressure and get some quick passes out, maybe some slants, um, even some screens or something, just to just some quick passes. You get get it out, out of the hands of Blake Shapin. You don't put a lot of pressure on your offensive line in those situations, and you just try to win with your, with your talent at wide receiver. And you got – you got guys that can do that. I think this receiver group is talented enough. I just don't think that for full four quarters you can drop back, you can run play action, things like that, without having been able to establish a little bit of a run. So, yeah, it wouldn't shock me at all. I mean, I would come out and try to take some shots early. What about defensively? I think the same is true in terms of taking shots early. I am, I'm pressuring here. I, I, I'm going to just tell Florida, especially if Mertz is out there, I'm going to say, we're bringing pressure. We're going to load up the box. We're going to keep you from running it. And if Mertz throws it over the top of us, well, God bless him. Because that's just how it's going to have to be. I would put as much pressure on these quarterbacks as I possibly could. Yeah, for sure. And especially Mertz, like you said. I mean, And then whenever DJ Lagway comes in there, this is a guy that hasn't played you know, in front of this many opposing fans in his life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what the crowd's going to be like, but it's going to be loud it should be probably their biggest crowd that they've had, maybe um, a little less than the first game. I don't know what to expect, but it's probably going to be loud, and those people aren't cheering for you like they were at the Swamp. Right. So uh, that's going to be interesting to see how he handles that, and this is a five-star recruit. This is a different kind of dude. He's built a little different than some of these other freshman quarterbacks. Yeah. But, I I mean, he's never experienced this. Right. This is going to be new to him. So yeah, I think that is that's certainly something that you got to do, bringing pressure from from different you know angles and stunts and twists and corner blitzes and safety blitzes, anything that you can do to disrupt what they do offensively because I, I you you can't win just putting three down linemen up there and a couple of linebackers. Something we haven't talked about a lot this week, but it was a huge problem last week was penalties. And, you know, Lebby was so adamant during the offseason about cleaning up pre-snap and not having penalties and not getting behind schedule. State has, a, a you know, a, what, an eight-yard gain on the first play of the game, something like that, second play of the game. But it comes back on a hold, and they're, they're off schedule, and then that's the end of that uh, for Mississippi State. Uh, they've got to fix that. You know, penalties, when, you, when, you, when you're not good offensively, it's tough enough to gain 10 yards in three plays. Gaining 15 or 20 is, is nearly impossible. State's got to be better there this week. Uh, Don't think you can disagree with anything I just said. Very good. <laughs> All right. Let's do a couple of us. Uh, let's do some playmakers. Offensively, what do you think? I'm going with the offensive line. I mean, five playmakers. All five of them. And I, I don't know if I've ever done that before. I, I, it's always been kind of a skill guy, but I'm at the point now where it's it's got to be that group up front. Those five guys have got to be a cohesive unit, Blocking downhill, opening up holes. I'm done, you know, saying it's on the shoulders of Blake Shapin or it's on the shoulders of Mississippi State's running backs. It's on the shoulders of those five guys up front. And you've made the point the last couple of days about how important it is to establish the line of scrimmage. My playmakers are those guys. Um, they're they are going to open things up for Mississippi State. If Mississippi State's offense has success, it's because of them. So that's my call this week I think it's all five of them and if you can't get the the, if you can't get what you want from 
one or two of those players, you got to start making a change. This is game number four, and we're now kind of past the whole get acquainted situation. It, you, you now are um, get it done or get out. And yeah. if State's not getting it from their left tackle, they need Jimothy Lewis to get a shot or, or someone like that. Luke Work needs more reps. Either this group gets it done this week or it's time to find a new group. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try to speak something into existence. Did it last week. I'm going to do it this week. Didn't work last week. But, you know, second time's the charm. That's what they say, right? Um, Johnny Daniels. I think Johnny Daniels did enough, played hard, to to draw a start this week. I think he should start at tailback. And we'll see where it goes from there. But State's got to find a running back that they can rely on. So why not Johnny Daniels? Uh, That's who I'm going to go with here. I'd like to see him get the ball, double-digit carries. And just give him, you know, let him try to get something going. Let him try to break one. I feel like if State could break one long run, the the, the dam might open up a little bit for them. But yeah. Daniels is going to be the guy I'm going with. What about defensively? What do you got? Oh, boy. I mean. I know, right? <laughs> I, I talked about this last night on Under Lightning Live, and I was just like, no clue. No clue. I don't trust a single one of them. I mean, Isaac Smith. <laughs> I want Isaac, Isaac Smith to be Smith a playmaker. Is carrying the defense right now. But I want him to have an interception. Yeah. Or a fumble recovery. Something. Has State, other than that pick six, have they forced a turnover? They have not, have they? Um, Didn't have one last night? No. I okay. don't think so. That's, that's what I thought. I thought it was interesting that Corey Ellington was probable for this game. I was interested. We, we didn't talk I, about that. The first uh, injury report out. Calvin Dinkins and Trey, Trey White, the only two out, correct? Yeah, and Tyler Woodard's out for the for the first, first half, half with the. Uh, that's not an injury though. That's a, a suspension. Yeah, so, you know, I guess I'll go with Isaac Smith, but it, it's it's like you said, he needs a dynamic play. He needs something that's going to change a drive. So, an interception, a fumble, forced or something, you're you're going to have to have it from him. But he's probably going to be my playmaker uh, again this week, just because they're. They're just not getting anything from the defensive line. The linebackers have struggled to tackle. Isaac Smith is is just kind of it right now for this defense. All right, I'll go with that. I'm gonna just. I want you to do me a favor. Just look me in the eye. Look, look, look me right here. Tell me I'm an idiot. Just say it. Oh, you're an idiot. I I have no problem saying that. I'm gonna go with Trevion Williams one more time. Oh. Oh boy, what are you doing? I I, I, I got to have this. I need it. I, I again, I'm trying to speak it into existence. State's got to. I, I just said that state's got to control the line of scrimmage. They've got to stop the run. He's the he's the spear point for that. Uh, you know, it, I think I saw Bingley Jones was on the the injured list as I think maybe doubtful. Which so I mean, what have we really? I mean, I, just, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Travion has 13 tackles. Hmm. You could have told me any number. Between zero and whatever Isaac Smith has, and I would have believed you. I mean, because I yeah, just don't know. Tackles his first two years. Man. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go one more time. I'm glutton for punishment with this kid. What about your X factor? This is the, this is the the, the 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 most important thing. Like, because somebody's gonna have to come off the radar here. So oh, you the, think so? Yeah. The X factor uh, is going to be a big part of this. So whoever you pick, pick wisely. Well, my my like I don't think mine's really off the radar, but okay. I I think that Kevin Coleman's going to have a a big game again. Okay. That he has been one of the few bright spots. He's even you know the the big plays he's had, he's kind of made something out of nothing uh, in a few of those. And I I just think that Mississippi State has a star in him. If they can get some of their issues on the offensive side under control and really use him the way that he can be used. I'm not saying they they haven't to this point, but maybe a little more. You know, put him in the backfield, get him uh, get him the ball in that way. Yeah. Put him, you know, some jet sweeps, some end arounds, things like that. Get the ball in his hands, and good things usually happen. I think he's going to have you know a, a big play or two in this one. I got to have a turnover in this game. All right, State has got to force a turnover. They've got to get extra possessions, preferably. On their on the uh, Florida side of the field, yeah. So I'm gonna go with Bryce Pollock. Let's let's see, you know let's see if he can get a pick. 
Uh, right now, Bryce Pollock is in that DeCambrian Richardson zone. Starts a lot of games, doesn't make any interceptions. Uh, I don't know if he'll be a third round pick as a result. We'll see. We want to see an interception this week. Going to try to speak that into existence. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Prediction time. Give it to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I make you do this. This is. I've been so conflicted about this all week. Like, I, I don't know where to go here. I think that with Mississippi State, you just you've got all this positive momentum in the last couple of days. Yeah, people kind of being re-energized. They got the two commitments. They got the the big um, donation. Yeah, people were excited, and it would suck royally to turn around and and get beat by a Florida team that's got a dead man walking as their head coach. Yeah. So maybe it's maybe I'm being a homer, but I, I think State's going to find a way to bounce back and win this game. So I, I'm going to say Mississippi State wins, uh, twenty-seven to twenty-four. There you go. I've said all week that I think whoever gets out early in this game is going to run away with it. I think it's not going to be a close game either way. If State gets out early, I think Florida will just lay down for them. If Florida gets out early. I think State's confidence is so low right now that they won't be able to do anything. And unfortunately for me, I think Florida's the more talented team, so that's where I'm going. Florida 35, Mississippi State 17 is my final score. 45? 35. All right, everybody remember, don't remember that I picked State to win, but if State wins, I want everyone to remember that Brian had no faith in this team. State does better. When I have no faith. You think so? I think so. Okay. Well, so, if they lose this game, I, mean, I will not pick them in another game this year. Maybe UMass, and that's I remember the uh, 2022 Egg Bowl, and I was just like, no chance. They have no chance, and they won. So yeah. there, there you go. Okay. All right, guys. What a weird Friday show, but it was fun. Uh, we'll talk to you again. Uh, obviously, uh, Thunder and Lightning post game uh, should be around, what, 2.30 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon. Please check that out on YouTube. Robbie and I will have the podcast up the next day on Sunday, and uh, then we'll go from there. You guys have a great weekend. If you're headed to Starkville, please travel safely. Uh, if you're in Starkville on the road as we get close to kickoff, check out the uh, MSU Mississippi Peanut Supply Tailgate Show, WLZA 96.1. comes on at 8 a.m., three hours before kickoff, and I'll have some more to talk about there. Uh, and, yeah, until then, for, Robbie, you got anything uh, going on this week? I know you got post game video and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, I have that reaction. That thing, the the last one got uh, ten thousand views. Awesome, that's great to see. That's great to <laughs> a see. A lot of them is. I'm glad uh, for you, but at the same time, there's there's some, there's some problems there. Yeah, a lot of them were Toledo uh, fans, Ole Miss fans. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Really, yeah, you know it is. I know. I, I know. Yeah, I know how it is. All right, guys, talk to you soon for Robbie Falk on Friday. Thanks for listening to Thunder Lightning here on Super Talk Mississippi. Everybody's gonna pay Cause the million dollar man Always gets his way <laughs> money, 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 money. A Super Talk Mississippi Media Production